Hi class, in this lecture here we're going to start talking about trigonometric functions of any angles. And what we're going to do here is we're going to just work through two things. Uh, first off, we're going to use the definition of trigonometric functions for any angles. So I'm going to show you uh, how to derive those definitions. It's going to be a really cool uh, way to, to set it up with right triangles, you know, like we learned from the previous um, lecture. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you use the sine of trigonometric functions to, to basically figure out the value for, for other the other trigonometric functions. And this lecture here is going to introduce the topics, and then we're going to work, um, as always, a ton of a ton of examples. Okay. So how do we set up and define uh, the trigonometric functions for any angle? All right. So so basic the basic concept is this: take the Cartesian plane. Okay. And we're going to set that up. And just recall uh, last lecture, our right triangle trig. OK, basically how we set up trig the trigonometric functions in terms of a right triangle. All right, so if you take a, an angle in standard position, OK, some angle like this. Okay, this is angle theta. So, okay, so theta is an angle in standard form or standard position. Okay, so that means the x-axis here is the terminal side or the initial side. And this ray here, this ray here, right here is the terminal side, okay? All right, if we pick, okay, now pick a point All right, we'll call it point P, which is some xy point on the terminal side Okay, so, so we'll just pick this point right here, okay Here's P, which is the point x comma y, all right the way we had defined uh, the trig functions, okay, was in terms of a right triangle. I rewrote theta here. If we take and draw down, what this is wild. If we draw down here a line from that point till it hits the initial side, we've now formed a right triangle, okay? So we can form a right triangle. by drawing a line down from point this point x comma y to the x axis or to the initial side all right now now this is this is awesome here so the length of this side right here of this triangle that i've now drawn it's just the x value from the point the length here of this line that I just drew down is whatever y is, the y value is. And then now we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the value of r. Okay, all right, so this will be the hypotenuse. So then think about this. So remember remember that silly saying I had from last lecture. So Katoa, so some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. So now watch, now that I've drawn this triangle here, sine of theta, Remember, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, sine of theta, so if here is, um, if here's theta, the opposite side is y, and the hypotenuse is this value r. So look, I now can find um, sine of theta, okay, for any, any, um, any angle, if I can just pick a point on the ray of the terminal side. That's it. Okay, now what, what about cosine? So cosine of theta, it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, look, the adjacent side to theta is x, whatever the x value is, and the hypotenuse is r, which we'll solve for. And then what's tangent, right? Tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. 
Well, that's that would just be y divided by x. And then you can figure out the other ones the, using the reciprocal functions, or reciprocal identities, excuse me. So no matter what um, angle I give you, okay, I can set up a right triangle and figure out what the what the six trigonometric functions are. That's that's what's going on here. All right. Um, so this is this is um, kind of just a more formal way to see it. Okay, if we let theta, okay, be any angle in standard position, so just like how I was talking about here in standard position, and let p, which is x y, be a point on the terminal side, which I drew here, okay, of this angle theta. If r, which is equal to x squared plus the square root of x squared plus y squared, is the distance from the origin, 0, 0, <coughs> to that point x, y, okay, then the six trigonometric functions of theta are just defined as the following, okay? As I said here, sine of theta is y divided by r, cosine of theta is x divided by r, tangent of theta is y divided by x, okay? And you can see here, obviously, there's there's rules that you can't have a divide by zero. And I'll talk about what happens in, in some previous examples when something like that comes up. Cosecant of theta, then, is r divided by y. Secant of theta is r divided by x. And cotangent of theta is just x divided by y. OK, so keep these handy, OK? Keep these, you know, and I'll come back to these during the lecture here. But now I want to just work some examples so that you can see um, see how to use this. All right. So we'll come back to this slide quite a bit throughout this lecture. All right, so here's the problem. Let's let p be the point 3 comma 4, be a point on the terminal side of theta, okay? Here's what I want to do. I want to find each of the six trigonometric functions of this angle theta, okay? So I'm actually going to draw this, okay, just so you could see here what's going on. Well, this is a terrible setup here. Let me get a better, better, better axis here. Not my best work, but you get the idea. Okay, so the point. 3 comma 4 is is, uh, is is over here. Okay, here's 3, here's 4. This is my point 3 comma 4. And what I'm saying here is, look, I have this angle that goes through this point. Okay, from here to here. This is my angle theta. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw down, as I said, and form this right triangle here, okay? And form this right triangle. So what it means is the length of this side of the triangle that I drew down is just the y value. The length here of this side is just the x value. And then look, we can figure out what, what the, the hypotenuse is, okay? r is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Well, that's the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. So the hypotenuse of this right triangle is 5, right? It's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And so now look, now you can find, once you set up this triangle, okay, I don't even know what theta is, but I can figure out what the, what the value of the six trigonometric functions are here. So sine of theta, you know, just go back. Look, sine of theta is y over r. Well, what is y? y is 4, r is 5. Cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is x over r. Well, my x is 3, my r is 5. And tangent of theta? Well, tangent of theta going back is just y over x. Well, that's 4 over 3. And now look, now we can figure out using the reciprocal identities, right? So cosecant of theta 
is just the reciprocal of this, so it's r over y, which would be 5 over 4. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of this, so it should be r over x, which is 5 over 3. And then cotangent of theta, reciprocal of this, is just x over y, which would be 3 fourths. Okay, so the, the, the trick here is that, right? So I, I, on, I really think drawing, you know, if you're given the point, draw it and set up the triangle like I did, and then you can see how it kind of, kind of falls into place here. All right, let's do another one, okay? Um, and, and what I encourage you to do is when I go to the, this next slide here, okay? I'm going to let p be the point 1 comma negative 2 be a point on the terminal side of theta. Okay. What I would do is I would pause the video and I would find each of the six trigonometric functions of theta. And then what I would do next after that is I would then unpause the video, right? And and watch me do it and see if you get the the same value. So I'm I'm just going to be quiet for a second and hopefully people pause and then I'll walk through how I how I solve this. So here, as I said, I think what helps is to sketch it, right? So here's my x-axis, here's my y, and it's the point 1 comma negative 2, okay? So the angle goes here like this. And so from here to here, this is my theta. This is angle theta I'm looking at, okay? So I'm going to draw the triangle down. And you can see here I now have a right triangle, okay? This this is my x. My x is 1. My y here okay is negative 2 and that's okay that's okay that it's negative all right now we just got to figure out the hypotenuse of the triangle right so r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared which is the square root of uh, 1 squared plus negative 2 squared which is the square root of 1 plus 4 right Okay, so r is just the square root of 5. And that's okay. I'm going to leave it leave it that way. All right? So let's just go through, right? Sine of theta. You know, if you have to go back, right? That's just y over r. Well, that would be negative 2 over the square root of 5. Which, when you rationalize the denominator, right? should be uh, minus 2 square roots of 5 over 5. Cosine of theta? That's just x over r. Well, that's 1 over the square root of 5, which is the same thing as the square root of 5 over 5. And then tangent of theta? Okay, that's just y over x, Okay, which is just negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. And now watch. Now, when I do the um, reciprocal functions, okay, I'm just going to use these parts instead of this, and you'll see why, right? Like, so cosecant of theta, all right, that's just r over y. Okay, which is the reciprocal of this right here. So r is square root of 5 over y is negative 2. So it's just negative uh, square root of 5 over 2. Secant of theta. Okay, that's just r over x, which is the flip of this, right? So it's uh, square root of 5 over 1, which is just the square root of 5. And then cotangent of theta, okay, well, cotangent is just x over y, 
Well, that would be uh, 1 divided by minus 2, which is just minus 1 half. Okay, so I think for, for all of these problems, right, I think the key, I think the key here you have to, you have to recognize is, you know, draw it, right? If you can draw it, then it's, it's, you know, then you can set up the triangle and then you can figure out, make sure you know what X and Y are and then, and then go from there. Okay, let's, let's now talk about something interesting here. Some of these, 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 um, uh, other types of angles, okay? So let me, let, what I mean by that is let me talk about when something is like a zero degree angle. All right, so let's talk about this. Evaluate, if possible, the cosine and the cosecant function, all right, at the following uh, quadrantal angle, so a zero degree angle, okay? So a zero degree angle looks like this, okay? All right, so, so notice what's going on here. So the point, it's going through point one comma zero. So that means my x value is one and my y value is zero, okay? All right, so if it's a zero degree angle, all right, then the terminal side of the angle is on the positive x-axis. So let's select the point one comma zero. All right, you can see cosine of, cosine of theta is just x over r, which is one over one, which is one. Awesome. But now check this out, okay? You can solve for r here, okay? And should have done that, should have stated that. Should, that's obviously one here. But if you look at cosecant of theta, that's r divided by y, okay? So that would be one, and what's our y value? It's zero, one divided by zero. So here, cosecant of theta is undefined for a zero degree angle, undefined, okay? You cannot, define, you cannot divide by zero. And that's totally okay to have, all right? You're gonna notice this in the coming, um, in some of the coming lectures when we start talking about how you graph these, these trig functions. Um, you know, we have a divide by zero, you know, what, maybe what is that going to mean in terms of, um, what the graph is going to look like, what it might butt up against. So, so keep that in mind here. Let's try this one. Evaluate if possible, the cosine and cosecant functions at the following, um, uh, quadrantal angle. So a 90 degree angle. Okay. So if we have a 90 degree angle, which is pi over two radians, then the terminal side of the angle is the positive y axis. So you can see right here. All right, so we're gonna select this point, um, uh, the point zero comma one. So if you were to draw the tr uh, a triangle from this, okay, it might look like something like this. Okay, you can see here like it's, it's like this. Okay. All right. So here we're going to have our X be zero. All right. Cause that's the, the, the point. All right. And a Y be one. All right. So you can solve for R here. Okay. And you'll get one as well. Um, so cosine of theta here, uh, well, what is, you know, what is this, right? Um, it would be x over r. Well, that would be 0 divided by 1, which is just 0. And then cosecant here would be r divided by y, which would just be 1 divided by 1, which gets you 1. So, so in this case, both of them are defined for a 90 degree angle. Now, if you try this one here, 180 degree angle, so like this. OK, so if we pick a point on the um, uh, terminal side here, right? So negative one comma zero, right? When you use r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, I should have referenced that back in the previous point too, how I got r is equal to one here. Um, and you wanna go through here. All right, so then the terminal side of the angle, again, for 180 degree angles, the positive x-axis. So let us select the point p, which is negative one comma zero, and then you can see my x is negative one and my y is zero. All right, so cosine of theta is x divided by r. Well, here you get negative one divided by one, which is negative one, no problem. But then again, what happens here, when you try to do this cosecant of theta, which is r divided by y, you get a divide by zero. Okay, so here you can see cosecant is undefined here. Okay, and again, that's okay. You know, some of these, what I'm hinting at with some of these trig functions here is, um, 
you're, what you'll notice is things like tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant have values for which they're undefined. So that's really important to remember, okay? All right, so let's do this last one here. If you look at something at a 270 degree angle, like this, and you pick a point on the terminal side, which is zero comma negative one, all right? Um, you can see here cosecant then, if you solve for r here, r would be one. Um, x divided by r would be zero divided by one, which is zero, totally okay. And cosecant here uh, would be r divided by y, which would be one divided by negative one, which is just negative one. So it looked like, it looked like what's really interesting here is cosecant was not defined for zero or 180. Okay, so for these, these what I hate to say it, but like flat angles like this. Okay. Let's now talk about, um, and you'll notice here what's also going back, what's interesting is cosecant had was um, in cosine, you know, sometimes they were negative, sometimes they were positive, okay? It turns out that you can um, uh, figure out uh, the signs of the trigonometric functions dependent on what quadrant the angle falls in, okay? So if the angle's in quadrant one, okay? It turns out all six trigonometric functions are, are positive. If your angle is in quadrant two, it turns out only sine and cosecant are positive, okay? In quadrant three, so if your angle is all the way over here in quadrant three, only tangent and cotangent are positive. And then if your angle is in quadrant four, okay, it turns out that only cosine and secant are positive. And so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna we're gonna do some examples where I give you some information. I tell you, you know, um, the value of one trig function, okay, and then from there I'm gonna tell you the sign of another one. And then just using those two pieces of information, all right, we'll be able to figure out uh, the value of the six trigonometric functions. <clears throat> okay. So look, here, 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 here's an example of at least of this. If I tell you that sine is negative and cosine, uh, sine of theta is negative, it's less than zero, and cosine of theta is also less than zero, it's negative. Name the quadrant in which the uh, angle lies. Well, it can't be quadrant one, right? Because all the functions are positive. It can't be in quadrant two, right? Because sine is positive in quadrant two, but I'm telling you here, sine is negative. It can't be quadrant four, right? It can't be quadrant four because I'm telling you cosine is negative, but cosine is positive over here. So the angle, just by telling you that sine is negative and cosine is negative, the angle must be somewhere in quadrant three, okay? So theta must be in quadrant three. Okay. So keep that in mind now, all right? Keep this, I'm gonna come back to this graph quite a bit, all right? But now, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do problems kind of like what we were doing before, okay? These type of problems, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, different information. Okay, so here's the first problem. Given that tangent of theta is equal to negative one third and cosine is negative, find the value of sine and cosine uh, for the angle. Okay, so I just wanna find the values exactly of sine and cosine here, okay? Okay, so tangent of theta if you look back, what is tangent of theta equal to? Going all the way back. Tangent of theta is equal to y divided by x. And I'm telling you that this is equal to negative one third, but here's the deal. I don't know, okay? Right off the bat, I don't know is y the negative value or x is the negative value. So it's like, oh, shoot. Okay, 
So the way you figure that out, okay, is with this piece of information here, okay? So like looking, looking back here, all right? The angle can't be in quadrant one, right? Because um, uh, all of them are positive. It can't be in quadrant two, right? Okay, because um, uh, cosine is positive, and, and, and in the problem I'm telling you cosine is negative. It can't be in quadrant three, right? Because tangent is positive, and I'm telling you here tangent is negative. So theta, so theta, what I'm hitting at here is theta must be in quadrant two. Okay, so if it's in quadrant two, what does that mean? It means the x value is negative and the y value is positive. So tangent of theta, which is y over x, would then be one divided by negative three. So watch. So I'm telling you here, x, just by looking across, x has to be negative 3, and y has to be 1. So now, look. Now when I draw down to make the right triangle, OK, great. Look at this. Awesome, OK? So I can figure out what uh, r is. r is equal to the square root of x squared, which is minus 3 squared, plus y squared, which is 1 squared, which is the square root of 10. So look, I've got x, I've got y, I've got r. Boom, no problem. All right, so sine of theta. So look back, you know, if you need it in your notes, sine of theta is y divided by r, which would be 1 over the square root of 10, which would be when you rationalize the denominator is square root of 10 over 10. And then cosine of theta, well, remember, cosine of theta has to be negative. Well, check it out. Cosine of theta is x over r, which is just negative 3 over the square root of 10, which is negative. So when you rationalize the denominator here, it is minus three or negative three times square root of 10 divided by 10. So we got it, all right? All right, let's do, let's do one last one here, okay? Um, and it's gonna be a little bit trickier, okay? So given that cosecant of theta is equal to negative four and tangent is positive, Find the exact value of each of the remaining trig functions. Okay. So cosecant of theta. So if you need it, go look back. Cosecant of theta. Co okay, cosecant of theta is r over y. And I'm saying it's equal to negative 4. So that would be negative, uh, excuse me, uh, r over y. Sorry about that is r over y. So that would be negative 4 over 1. But I, what I here's the thing. I don't know. I don't know if if where 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 the negative's going to go here, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious, but um, if you look, tangent has to be positive. So look, tangent is positive here. It, it tangent is also positive in quadrant 1, but we can't be in quadrant 1. So we have to be in quadrant 3 here. So what this means then is this is four over negative one here, like this. All right. So if it you know if it helps here, right? So um, we've got y. Y is negative one. R is equal to four. The way we'll find x is you have r squared is equal to um, x squared plus y squared. So this would be four squared is equal to x squared plus minus 1 squared. So it would be 16 is equal to x squared plus 1. So look, you get x squared is equal to 15. Now when you solve here, remember, I said you're in quadrant 3. 
So in quadrant three, both the x and the y value is negative, right? So when you solve here, you're going to get x is equal to negative the square root of 15. And you and you had you got that basically by figuring out right like you know what quadrant your angle's lying in. So then once you figure out what y, x, and r are, now you can now you can just walk through the rest. Okay, so sine of theta that's equal to y divided by r, which is negative one over four. Cosine of theta. That's just x over r. So that's negative the square root of 15 over 4. And tangent of theta. Okay. Tangent of theta is um, equal to going back y over x. So here would be negative 1 over negative the square root of 15. Negative, negative becomes positive. And then when you rationalize the denominators, you just got that. All right, we don't need to do cosecant because we know it's equal to, to negative 4. So secant of theta, okay, well secant of theta is r over x. Well, that would be minus... Uh, the square root of 15 over, oh, I'm sorry, r would be 4, excuse me, 4 over minus the square root of 15, which is just minus 4 square roots of 15 over 15. And then finally, cotangent is just x over y, which is negative the square root of 15, and y is negative 1. Negative, negative is a positive. So it's just the square root of 15. All right, class. I know this stuff can be can be confusing. And I know it's not the easiest, easiest stuff to wrap your mind around. But, um, you know, once you practice, 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 you'll get a chance to practice on the problems and, you know, including, you know, some of the additional stuff in, in the online learning system. The more you practice, uh, the easier this will get. And as always, I am I'm here to help.